channel. Here we go. Hey, everybody. It's Maria from What's the Story with Maria. How's it going? Um, first of all, I'm a little froggy tonight. I hope you don't mind. I had a little bit of a, I was in and out. It was crazy weather this week. It was 70 one day and it was literally, it went to 30 degrees the very next day. So I was working inside and outside and I, I, I lost my voice a little bit, but I'm still here. So first of all, I want to explain to you what I do here. We're Facebook living as we're doing the show. So a lot of our wonderful friends will come on and check in and I want to say hi to them. So my first, um, Chris DePiero has ch joined in. Peter, John Ripley has joined us. Hi, Peter. Hi, Chris, John, uh, Jason Peck, Kian Martinus, uh, Stephen Elbell and Barbara Portis. Karen Mead has joined us. All these wonderful people have come on right away. Thank you so much. Kyle de Blasio has joined us. So you're going to hear me doing this a lot. For our radio listeners, I'm not... Um, losing my mind that happened years ago so yeah, i'm just acknowledging both. people right <laughs> so paul lucas has joined us and we want to thank you folks for coming on um now i just want to tell you one of our guests that was supposed to be on jessica schaefer who's a sweetheart an amazing singer and musician she had a um a dental emergency happen today and ended up at the dentist and we figured today was not the best day to be on the radio with a swollen mouth and Novocaine. So we're gonna reschedule Jessica. She is gonna, I know, well, these things happen. <laughs> she's gonna maybe call in if she can't, she's on pain meds, I think, I don't know. <laughs> Anything can happen. She's gonna call in and say hi about 9.30ish. Jay Rivera has checked in. Stephen Elbell says, Jeffrey and Stephen say hi. Hi guys, how are you? They came by to see me this week. Okay, so hi Rory Taggart in from Canada. Um, my friends that are here tonight are um, Walker Vreeland and joining us last minute, but <laughs> he was going to come and enjoy our delicious food anyway, <laughs> and we have invited him to join us, is Evan, how do you say your last name, Evan? Sollers. Sollers. Evan Sollers is here. So Judy Jerome has joined us. She's been on the show. Um, okay, so Evan is a colorist, and I know this is of great interest to a lot of our listeners, because we have a, a huge amount uh, of people out there that are in the hair business. So we have um, trichologists, we have cutters, we have all kinds of people. And now we have a, a what Evan specializes in is color. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that. We're excited about that. Tom Grounds has joined us. Rachel Pierce has joined us. Okay, now um, let me just tell you, I had a little bit of a crazy week because I was my promo was about my bathroom. They were my there was a pipe that burst in my bathroom. These are New York stories, folks. So the poor guy downstairs from me, um, I was taking a shower, and apparently it, he was taking a shower at the same time without <laughs> meaning to. So they came up, they had to shut off my water, and and uh, I didn't have a bathroom for a week. They gave me keys to another apartment where nobody supposedly lives there. But I was like a little spooked out to go in there to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. So I was in, I was at Judy's a lot this week. And thank you, Judy Mesa, uh, for all that hospitality. And oh my God, it was crazy. Finally, yesterday, they finished it. And today I was able to put everything back on the walls. So I had a crazy day. But I think the apartment looks okay. No, it looks okay. great. Okay. All right. And the bathroom is, is back, <laughs> back to, to normal. Back right? in order. I got, a, I got like a new. I got a new pipe that goes into my toilet. Can you believe this? And my tub, <laughs> brand new. I mean, I, I, this is exciting. Ed Kuchu, he's in the hair business. Eddie, we got a colorist on tonight. Wow. Kenneth uh, Gardner has joined us. Yay. All right, so I, uh, Yvette Bloom, hi Yvette. Here's what I wanna tell you folks. Please, please feel free to share this video right now or anytime during the show. Feel free to just Go ahead and share it because then it gets on your pages and people can see it and you can enjoy it from your own page. So let's uh, start with you, Walker. We have known each other for, I'm just going to say 10 years at least. Mm -hmm, at least. At least. Yeah. Uh, and we met downtown. We had mutual friends. Mm -hmm. You're a singer. I'm a singer. Mm -hmm. And then I found out that you were also doing a radio show out in Long Island. That's right. Right. So tell us yeah. about that because that, that, that was a whole other part of you that I didn't know. Right, because well, we met in the in the cabaret world um, because I spent a lot of time at Rose's Turn downtown. So I knew you, and like you said, we had a lot of um, 
mutual, mutual friends. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and friends. then I left, uh, I left the business and went into broadcasting and left uh, New York for a while and moved to uh, Long Island where I hosted uh, my own radio show. And for it was a great show. 10 years. And I uh, promoted a lot of her. He did. Uh, beautiful uh, songs. You were always so supportive. Thank you so much. <laughs> you got your kindness makes me cry. Got a lot of airtime on WBAZ <laughs> in, in, in the Hamptons. Uh, so anyway, yeah. And so now, did, did you have to broadcast from the Hamptons? Mm -hmm. Did you live out there? I did. How did you like that? It was that? a big, it was a big change. I, I mean, was going to say, had... I remember that you were in the city. Yeah. Hi, Penny James has joined us. She is in the hair business as well. Penny, oh. I have mm -hmm. a colorist on tonight, <laughs> our friend Evan Sollers, and he joined us at the last minute. He was so good about it. So Penny is uh, my friend. She's been on the show. She's a, a hairdresser, but also a trichologist. So that oh. is Wow. You know, hair loss and dealing with that. And sure. She's amazing. Wow. Irina has joined us. She is a makeup artist. Hi, Irina. So wow. um, Walker was telling us about being out in the Hamptons and broadcasting yeah. there. You moved out there. I moved out there. It was so, uh, it was a huge transition because I had been, I mean, I'm born born in New York. Didn't, <laughs> was, wasn't, um, I grew up all over the place in Baltimore and, and Boston and a little bit oh, actually. Yeah, I didn't where know you're that. from. Yes. But um also Where'd you I live mean, in Boston. I lived in Natick. So Natick not in nice. Boston, yeah, but, but like nice. you know, 40, 40 minutes outside. My sister of Boston. has a hair salon out in West Concord. Okay. So that's that, that's out really that close. way. European Definitely. flair. Yeah. West Concord. Yeah. Shout out. So uh but you know, I'm a New Yorker and and I went to NYU, so I lived I lived in New York for a long time and then I left uh, uh you know, left and and it was it was nice. It was nice to get away. I, I think I needed it at the time to get away for a lot of reasons, which we'll get into. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was um, it was it really the job was what kept me there. If it hadn't been for the job, if it hadn't been for the opportunity to to um, have my own show and develop it and find my voice, really, yeah, um, it, I, mean, I think it would have been harder. It was tough. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. It was tough. Like yeah. it's because living in the Hamptons is not real. Well, especially life. off season. Right? Well, it can be really, really quiet. I want to, um, Maria Kalati has joined us. She is from Nate. He was just talking about Natick, Maria Kalati. Oh my God. She is, um, <laughs> she does hair. She's a wardrobe person. She is amazing. She does many things. She's in New York, but she's from Boston. Joe Savino has joined us, the most uh, handsome man in the world. <laughs> um, he's in radio. He's big in radio. Oh, fantastic. Joe Rocks, uh, Night Talk. Joe Rocks, Night Talk, Thursday nights at 1 a.m. They talk about dirty things sometimes on that show. Mm. So, kids, turn your ears off. But uh, if you're an adult, you want to listen to Joe's show, Joe Rocks. Kathy Go Gubiner has joined us. She has a show. Hey, Kathy. Uh, the Mike and uh, Kathy and Mike show. Kathy, type in the exact name of your show so I can tell people about it. Kathy's great. She has a show on Armed Digital Media, uh, Armed Radio, which is what um, they give us the opportunity to do what we're doing here. So thank you, Joe Rocks. Thank you for the opportunity. And you, so you were out in Long Island. Mm -hmm. You were living there. Was it the kind of thing? Trying not to go out of my mind. Yeah, because it's off season. It's kind of quiet out there, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I think like, I'm, you know, that you're a New Yorker when, when you leave New York and then the first thing you start scheming on how you're going to get back. So right away, okay. almost right away within a year, I was like, oh, this is great, but mm, it's just not, I have to get back to New York. But it ended up staying for 10 years. Really? Yeah. So it was a long, it was, I mean, it was an amazing experience because I learned so much about myself and, and had, um, you know, had this incredible opportunity that I wouldn't have otherwise had. Like you were like um, one of the first people that I used to love you. I mean, I, I did love your show. I still do. Oh. You know, when I think about it, but, and you had some such interesting people on, you know, like when you had that medium, that, oh, that, that spiritual. Wow. You were listening. Of then? course. Wow, I so love your show. Wow. And I just yeah. remember thinking like, wow, look at what Walker's doing. Like I, I really still do admire you in the way that you frame things also your voice is you have a beautiful voice and thank you it was a, it was a very uh unique experience because i was on a, it was on it was a radio it was it was of course it was a radio show it was a, it was a music radio show so it was um it was an adult contemporary station so it w wasn't a talk station it wasn't a talk but format you used to feature people yeah right? i want to acknowledge jim bell he says we're doing great Jim Bell is our producer and engineer tonight. Let's have a good yes. for Jim Bell. Thank you, Jim Thank you, Bell. Jim Bell. He's, I love Jimmy. I love him. 
Um, all right, Kathy. Uh, oh my, your son lived in Astoria. Kathy's son is in the is it your son that's in the military, Kathy. I think so. Kathy's son is in the military, so we su we salute you, sir. Yes, he is so handsome. Thank you for your service. We do. Thank you for your service. Um, we want to send that out because we have a lot of armed um, armed forces people that listen to us, and we love you and appreciate you very much. Ryan Bristol joined us from Colorado. Okay, so uh, Walker, you now for your show, would you plan? Would you would you get to create the program or did they tell you well yes and no so okay. so the the music these days uh unlike radio was when it began um it's all automated mm -hmm. and everything is programmed in advance so all the music is sort of lined up before your show you know exactly what's going to play uh in terms of what the content was i was given a lot of freedom i really was um it was a it was a big gift because they sort of let me from day one just go on and do me right and do uh, do the kind of create the kind of programming that i thought was interesting yeah um and uh you know talk to psychics and talk I about astrology it. and also uh interview artists i mean that really was my passion I you know, know coming from having come from the theater having come from the cabaret world um, and having been an actor, of course, I that was my my passion was talking to artists. Yep, and on on the radio. I and loved, so yeah, I that, loved your show. That's well, what it led to. I want to say something. First of all, you know what you said that they gave you the freedom to do that. That is really trusting someone, and that's an amazing thing. And I want to thank uh, Oh Night Talk with Joe Rocks. Sixty minutes of commercial free nonsense and background noise, and you take shot with Joe. Oh my I, You gosh. see what I mean? I well, knew this was going to go south quickly. He takes showers. I guess when it's that dirty, you need you to constantly sort of clean up, clean it. That's clean Facebook it. Mm -hmm. Live, too. Right. Uh, no. fa oh, is it Facebook <laughs> Live? That's a good question. Night Joe, talk Night Talk with Joe Rocks, that's Facebook. But the showers, that's what we're most concerned right. with. Right. We want to know if the showers <laughs> are Facebook Live. Because that there's a whole audience for that. Yeah, trust definitely. me. You could. So please, Joe, let us know. <laughs> syndicate that. Or some, you should play some really? sexy music while you're showering, Joe. He always has this like sexy, like kind of sax music in the back. Oh, I love it. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, really sax and that. showers, yeah. <laughs> right? And he's always got like some girl, like hot girl with an accent saying "night talk" with show. You know, it's like all that. And then, <laughs> and then add the shower, Joe. Add the shower. Maybe, maybe the water can hit the screen. I love it. I'm telling some steam come up. <laughs> so anyway, um, yes, it's so nice to have someone say. See, he's, he thinks it's a good idea. Well, mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're all about ideas here. So we, um, it's nice that someone trusts you and says, okay, what do you got? Let me hear what you got. But if you weren't doing the right thing, I'm sure they would have come in very quickly and said, nah. Well, they came in a few times. <laughs> Did they? <laughs> no, I mean, they, they really were, they were amazing. They gave me so much freedom and I, and, and only because I think, um, I had a, a background in the theater and as an actor, so I had no radio experience. And, and when really? you start in radio, um, I mean, I was so bad. It took, God, it takes you what so- What do you mean you were so bad? I, I mean, well, when I now listen back to yeah. tapes of like my first year on the air, oh, it's so, Maria. Really? It's so hard because you haven't, I mean, I think it's different for you because you're, I don't know, you jumped right into this medium and you're, it's so easy for you well, to just- thanks to Joe Rocks. I, I mean, mean, Joe Rocks threw me into the medium, didn't he? He said, get out of the shower <laughs> and get right. on the radio. Here's a towel. Here's a towel. We're going live snap in five that, minutes. Snap right. out of it. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I, I, what was I saying? You I completely was, lost my train of thought. You were saying that as there was sometimes like the first year oh, yeah. where you listen back. Right. Oh, yeah. And well, I think for a lot of people, this is definitely true for me. It takes, it takes time to find your voice uh, in that way. I, yeah. I think I had, I had not found my voice, period. And so the well, whole- Well, you're a quiet person, I think. Really, you think? I, I mean, I don't mean that you, you don't project, but I mean, you are someone that is very dignified. That's so interesting. And noble and- <laughs> Isn't it interesting to hear well, other people's perceptions of you? Cause like, it, you don't think yes, of that, like the way you, you think about the, yourself what, what is- did you, what I said you, the same thing you to did? you when, when I first met you. That's What'd so, you say, Evan? And you said that you were surprised and now you're- You are a, a very- <laughs> I would put you in a sweet, 
grounded, wow. dignified, honorable category. That's Would so, you not, Evan? Yes. That's yes. so nice. I'm, well, I'm not being nice. I, no, I, no, no. I mean, I'm it's, telling the truth. Well, it's interesting because I, I think uh, it wasn't always that way. Uh, I think I've settled down a lot. Well, we uh, all do. I mean, that's what happens. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, it took me, it took me some time to find, to find this, like, I guess this groundedness that you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, but that comes with time. Oh, girl. I know. Ooh. Girl is right. <laughs> I know. I had to go through it. And Listen, that. I want to bring Evan into our conversation because first of all, he's adorable. So cute, right? Oh my God. And I, Evan, I cannot thank you enough. You were going to come over for... I was going to come over for dinner no matter what. I wanted you to, and um, Walker was so nice and was like, is it okay if I bring, I'm like, sure. Yeah. We sleep together. What? Don't (laughs) tell, oh my God. Sorry. Joe, turn it, look away. It's no longer a family show. Look away, Joe. (laughs) Joe's in the shower. We've lost him. Uh Uh-oh. Caitlin Rose Cantrell has joined us. John Bray has joined us. John Bray is a military guy. John Bray, we salute you. Yes. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Margaret Curry. She is in the cabaret world. Hello, Margaret. Hi, Margaret. So, um, Evan, this is perfect time to bring you in. Great. So, Evan, um, you tell us about what you do. So, I've been a, a hairdresser for about ten years. Ten years, and, and you specialize in. Now I specialize in color. Okay, I want you to give me your. We we made little signs. Let me see your signs. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. So, because I want to give this to you right away, so you can look this up right away. This is our friend Evan Solers, and he is goes under EvanTheColorist.com. Evan the Colorist is also on Instagram. I find, so you want to write that down, EvanTheColorist.com. You want to look that up. I find that people <laughs> that are in this business, because you know, we've talked about this many times on the show. My dad is a hairdresser, my sister, my uh, eight of my cousins, uh, Joyce and Gina, and Oh, my cousin Angela was in town this week. I had dinner with her, and I want to shout out her shop. She's at Studio 786 in Melrose, Massachusetts. My sister's at European Flair in West Concord. My cousin Nicole is at Nicole's Day a Spa and Salon. Joyce and Gina are at Joyce's Unisex Salon in Everett. And wow. you, where do you work, sir? And I work in Soho at Ion Studio. Ion is I. He's so modest. I O N. Yeah. He's very Studio. modest. He's like one of the top uh, colorists in New York City. Like he he <laughs> does all the 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 models and the um, you know, beautiful women. Oh come my God. To, He's a chick magnet. To him. He's a chick magnet like hair. Joe Rocks. In the in the only way I can be a chick magnet. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. Not everybody needs to be a chick magnet in that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? You still are surrounded by beautiful women. Yeah. yeah. You just you provide them with different services. Yeah. Right? So um, so you uh, work in Soho at mm-hmm. Ion. It's called? Ion Studio. Ion Studio. Yes. And where is that if we want to find you? Uh, it's on Wooster and Broom in Soho. That's a beautiful area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. That's yes. a beautiful. So if you're walking down the street. And you think I want to go see? You want me to make an appointment for you, though, right? You don't just have. Yes, I would love for you to make an appointment with. Me. But you don't. <laughs> you don't. Do you take walk-ins for colors? Yeah, of course. Oh, really? If, if we're available, we'll take a walk-in. You oh. usually do like a consultation first, Definitely. though, right? Yes. Joe goes to hairdressers. He says, "Yes, Joe." I've... He Facebook lives when he goes to the hairdresser. By the <laughs> way, we should all do that. Facebook <laughs> live when you go see your hairdressers. Michael Sawyer has joined us. So now a person. You... Does a person doesn't just start off as a colorist though, right? No, actually I was so adamant about doing cut and color. Okay. And I was working under people that said I would never become the top of my game if I did both. A and, lot of people say that in a yeah. lot of businesses. They say you need to be specific, which you are now. I am now. And you so you had to choose one or the other? Uh, I for a long time I said no, I want to learn how to cut and I want to learn how to co- color and I want to do both. And then as time went by, I just kind of fell more into the color. Did you, did you, you fell into it because you prefer it? I prefer it. And you know, I wasn't all that great. At oh, I went, listen, not everybody. <laughs> my dad wanted me to go into his business. I didn't have a calling for it. Thank yeah. God I didn't go into it. I didn't have a call, you know, but you have to go into what moves you and what you're really, you have to sometimes choose what you're better at. Yeah. And it sounds mm-hmm. like that's what you did, which was a smart decision, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, definitely. And And the more you do it, the more, once you decide to specialize and you're doing that over and over and over all day, 
you naturally become greater at it. So let me ask you, how many, how many would you say, at what point was it where you said, I got this? Oh, recently, actually. Okay. I, yeah. I've been doing hair a little over 10 years and I moved to New York about three years ago. Okay. From where? Uh, from South Florida. Uh, from Miami Beach area? Uh, Delray Beach. Delray Beach is Delray beautiful. Beach. My friend Catherine Salvio just moved there, as a matter oh, of fact. Nice. She just moved to Delray Beach, and uh, I was talking to her today. She bought some Rodan and Fields from me. You know, I sell skincare. She bought some of that. Danielle Maggio has joined us. Leo Rodriguez. Hi, Leo. You're late, but you are. No. We love you. Leo is so great. <laughs> I so, can recommend some good hair colorists in no, Delray Beach. Delray, I'm and sure Del really? I sure can. Oh, my God. Okay, hold on <laughs> up your side again, because I want to show Leo. My friend Leo Rodriguez, who's been on the show, but is also an amazing friend and great person. Leo, this is a website. If you get a chance, can you post this on our feed right now? Leo does this for me. He's just my friend, but he does this. EvanTheColorist.com. For our radio listeners, can you spell that, Evan? Uh, E-V-A-N, the, T-H-E, colorist, C-O-L-O-R-I-S-T.com. Okay. So that's our radio <laughs> listeners. And Leo will post it. He's amazing yeah. like that. We missed. Oh, look at he already posted it. Aww. Thank you, Leo Rodriguez. <laughs> Leo Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> I love, it. love it. So you started off in Delray Beach, mm -hmm. and you know some great colorists down there. Yeah. So Evan, the colorist, also knows people in other parts uh, of the country. If you want to, if you're there, you can't get up, and that's how we always help each other in this, in this wonderful be world of being creative. Walker. You helped me quite a bit when you had your radio show. You always promoted my music, and I never forgot that. Aww. So I want to thank you for that. Oh, it was my pleasure. Always so sweet. You would, uh, We stayed in touch for many, yeah. many years. Yeah, we did. It's easy to promote something that you're naturally uh, you know, excited about. That's and, what I always say. You know, then it's natural. It's not something that you have to actually work at or mm -hmm. think about. Um, so I, was, I just wanted to share your... Um, your album with my listeners, Thank especially you. because I was, um, you know, and I was, so that was another way that I sort of broke the rules because I was on this, it wasn't a top 40 station, but it was a, a you know, adult contemporary mm -hmm. music. So we were playing a lot of, you know, Gaga and Katy Perry and, um, and Bruno Mars and Vance Joy and that kind of music. And I was talking to Betty Buckley and, oh, you know, it. gossiping with Joy Behar about I why she it. had left The View. And oh I wanted to, to talk about, you know, pop culture, but also like the theater world and the cabaret world. So, um, you know, when I would play your song, I would, I would tell my listeners who you were and, um, and, um, and, where, and where you could be found. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, I never forgot that. Uh, Thank you, Walker. So now let me ask you something. So you interviewed people like um, Joy Behar and Betty Buckley. Mm -hmm. And would you reach out to them or would the radio station reach out to um, them? So sometimes they were interviews that I pursued mm. myself. Actually, it was really because it was my show. It was it was my what was the responsibility name of the show? to book the guests. It was called Interview with the Artist. So yes, this yes, year, hold up. Here, um, I'll hold that while you, you want to do it. Yes. All right. So yeah, this Tell up here. The, this is the name of my my play, but this is the name of my radio show, which is and and podcast, which you can find as a podcast on iTunes. It hasn't been updated in a long time because I have I have left the the business since, but. Um, Maybe I'll start it up again why at some not? point. Why? I mean, why not? You're it's so it's, good at um, it. But uh, yeah, so so I I created the show interview with the artist, and it became something that I did on the air, and something that I did as a podcast, and so I was able to invite guests that I was interested in, and usually it was when they were coming to town to perform. I love. That. Um, sometimes they would get in touch with me if they were coming through or they're put not them but their publicist would 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 get in touch and say you know uh sophie b hawkins is is coming to town and wow. would you like to speak with her or um what was the name of the other what's the one that you listened to um, um, um what's her name now i can't re remember it, it, roberta flack roberta flack oh, came on the show i did i got an interview they're all on the on the website oh how um, cool we'll have to go and artist. listen to that um, I, I i listened to quite a few of your shows i really enjoyed it Wait, did you also win an award? You also won an award. I won an award. Walker? Well, I won an award in the Hamptons for it was a the best media personality. In, yeah, well, in the that's Hamptons. you act like that's not such a big deal. <laughs> that's a big deal. Thank you. I remember that. 
Thank that you. That was really so, a big deal. Well, uh, thank you. That's very sweet. It was, it was nice to, I felt like I, I, when I left, I felt like I could leave because I felt like I had accomplished everything that I set out to. Like there were very specific things that I wanted to accomplish while I was there. Yeah. Um, and I did those things. And then I started after I reached those goals and then I started to get restless. And then well, I that, started to feel like, that's okay. good though. See, a lot of people can get very set on their ways and they can get very comfortable and rest on their laurels. And I have been guilty of that over the years. Well, no, but me too. And I probably should have left. Me too. There's like lots of places I should have left Three years or four years before I actually did. Right. And that's another story. I ended up, um, I was diagnosed with cancer in, you know this, right? I do. Yeah, I, so in, yeah, I didn't know if you wanted to bring it up. So oh, I, honey, I, it's I didn't all it. <laughs> on the table oh, I with love me. It. Um, so, uh, yeah, so in, in May uh, 2016, it's just like a couple of years ago, really, yeah. I got this cancer diagnosis and um, and I I learned that I was going to have to get my, um, my liver removed, oh my, my three quarters of my liver taken out. Did you? I did. Whoa. So on August 1st, 2016, I had three quarters of my, I mean, I literally have this huge scar on my abdomen and you know, that was, um, I mean, there's no way you can go through something like that and have it not change your life forever. You, you're forever changed for it yeah um because you know going in that there's that not everybody survives that surgery there's mm -hmm. a chance that you're not going to survive it and well you look amazing thank you I mean, the, the liver grows back can you believe yes, that is that does. amazing i mean the body the human <laughs> no, body it really is does unbelievable it's crazy i've heard that yeah it's it just it kind of like has a mind of its own and it regenerates yeah i do know that i, I know that very well because i have a lot of friends that over the years have decided to change their lifestyles mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and, or some people you know, had the, like you right. had cancer. It was a different, it wasn't about a lifestyle. Sure. It was just about being dealt a certain hand. Yep. yep. And I do know that it's one of those amazing phenomenons. It can heal itself. So, yeah. So I was very lucky. I was a, it was a, um, a very difficult, um, traumatic surgery, but I got through it. And what, what it made me do was I think anytime you have a crisis, whether it's, um, illness or, uh, loss or any kind of major uh, life crisis propels you forward, don't you think? I mean, it just makes you get real with yourself. Well, I will makes say you this. get busy doing yep. the, 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 the stuff that you know that you need to be doing because you realize life is. Yes, I will say this. I want to take a second and just say this because I think it's important. First of all, Jessica uh, Schaefer's joined us. She was supposed to be on our show tonight and mm. she had a little dental emergency. Oh. So Jessica, would you mind calling in in five minutes? If, um, so call in in five minutes, because I want Jessica to at least say hello to, because uh, I put it up on the promo, uh, and we're going to have, we're going to reschedule Jessica for another day. I'm going to go back to Walker. So Walker, what you said, um, you, what, what Walker was saying was, don't you think that it does propel you to appreciate your life and all that? It can, mm -hmm. if you choose to have it be that. Mm -hmm. And you made that choice. That mm -hmm. is what, what you're dealt is what comes from another place. What you do with it comes right. from you. H how you choose to respond. Right. Because, you know, my mom was sick for, for uh, many years and then she always was so amazing with it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I didn't know where it came from. And mm -hmm. you're the same type of person. You're, you know, I would be following your post and I'd be like, oh my God, I hope he's okay. And like, all of a sudden you just started to like, come out of this cocoon, like it was just amazing. So I think that 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 you deserve a big round of applause for that and oh. you deserve acknowledgement for taking the reins on that because not everybody does. I'm not saying that, that people give up, but some right. people don't, um, they have a different head about it, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, and not everybody, or some people, whatever it is in your life, whether it's addiction sure. or whether it's, um, you know, you fall on financial hardship, mm -hmm. or whatever. Sometimes people just throw in the towel, right? Or they get angry, right? You, well, I got angry. I mean, I, I went through all the stages that you go through. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was scared to death. I mean, of I course. was scared to death. You know, uh, but but I also knew that if I got through it, which I did, thank God, uh, that I would do what I had been postponing in my life and do what I had been putting off, which was, I knew I needed to, uh, leave the radio, uh, for 
at least a short time, just step away from it. Um, I knew I had to come, come back to New York City because um, my body just needed to be here. Mm -hmm. um, it's just where, so you just sometimes I know where you are meant to be in on the planet and this yeah. is it. And a, around people like you and other creative people, I needed to be around my people. And then also I knew that- well, we're I, so glad you're back. <laughs> thank I'm you. I'm so happy when you came I'm back. So I'm so glad to be and back. And then you sang. Yeah, you well, I, I, I knew that I wanted to come back because I wrote this play, which was one of the things that I did when I was out in the Hamptons uh, in the cold, oh, in you the barren okay. cold. And we are going to um, talk about that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take a little second because I want to really give that the attention oh. that it deserves. So Julie Cesari has checked in. I'm here, but no sound or video. That's, I hope that's not happening hmm. anywhere else. Anybody else having that? Everybody else seems I to be I need the hearing. ship and the shape. Oh, I haven't seen these comments. It's hilarious. Oh my God, yeah, I like to scroll down. I need down. the ship and Susan the shape. Susan Perry has joined us. Peggy Eason. Uh, Joanna Abendanza, also a hairdresser. We have a colorist on tonight, Joanna. She's out there. so many hairdressers. I told wow. you, so I told funny. you we do. Now, Jessica Schaefer, I want you to call in on, she's gonna call in in a minute, and then we're gonna talk to Jessica because we're gonna have her on the show as well. And I'm gonna um, switch over. So I wanna talk about Evan for a second. A lot of hairdressers just popped on. She says, hello, Joanna. It's, Hi, Joanna. She, uh, she's a hairdresser. She's great and feisty. Evan works <laughs> in Soho, and uh, tell us about your salon again that you work at. Uh, it's called Ion Studio. I'm not that feisty. <laughs> well, you're not as feisty as Joanna, trust me, she's feisty. <laughs> Evan is very sweet and he's a colorist. He's, that's what he does. He's a specialist uh, and he's a colorist that's down in Seoul. He, and you work with models predominantly? I do. Well, I'm trying to get more into that, but I do do uh, some models. We have relationships with agencies and a lot of models come to our salon. So they do the agencies send them to you yes. and say, do something with this. No, they say do this specifically. Oh, really? And For I, shoots and things of that nature? Yeah. And I have to do that. Oh wow, yeah. that's interesting. Do you do like all the different? Do you do all the different? Uh, um, like, do you do that color layering where it's like one color upon one color upon one? You see, you'll see like all yes. that. So, What's that called? So what, what I that? specialize in? Balayage. Balayage. Oh yeah. Ah. So balayage is um, sort of what I do. I, I don't really call what I it's do. It's really balayage. difficult. I think it's um yeah it's freehand painting onto the hair. That's what it is. Uh, Penny James knows about that. She was, she's the one who introduced me to that concept, foliage. Well, I had never heard of it until I didn't know that there's this new thing in hair coloring, which is a paint, it's hair painting, right? Yeah. I never heard the term, I'd never heard you say balayage, but. Well, I don't really call what I do balayage because I'm not, well, I'm not French for one thing. Right. And I, I, me neither. So, you know, you I French, call what I do hair painting. Yeah. It's, it's hair painting, right? It's hair painting. Yeah. It's hair painting. Right. But I, it's a, such a cool concept. And yeah. um, you have, so on Instagram, do you show what your work? Yeah, actually I do. So Evan, the colorist at Instagram, right? On Instagram, mm -hmm. yeah. On so Instagram. I don't know if you know this, but I was in art school before I did hair. I don't, I didn't know so that. And I, I, please tell us about that. Yeah, so, well, I'm a, an art school dropout. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> but um, I did a little painting and drawing. And that didn't really work out, but I got a lot of a good tools. What did you like to paint? Was um, it abstracts? No, I did like portraits, like and landscapes and still lifes. Oh, okay. Um, well, beautiful. You know, you know, nothing too creative, but um, well, I got a lot of good skills with the paintbrush. Oh, and, okay. And not uh, really knowing that I was and shading and all that. Definitely. I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. That the perspective. Yeah. Color theory. Wow. Color theory. Color um, theory. Yeah. And I want to know more about that. Right? <laughs> I love that. So, uh, yeah. And and then you just decided to switch over? or Completely randomly. That's what happens. I hear this yeah. so often. Yeah. Over and over and over. I, we, I had a, a guest on last week that was in dental school mm -hmm. and decided he wanted to open a restaurant. Yeah. Michael yeah. Bears. I mean, um, Wayne Bears and Michael Bobo were on. Michael Bobo is in the restaurant business and then decided to create colognes mm -hmm. and he has these beautiful colognes that he created. It's just, I guess when you are a person that lives in, on a mm -hmm. creative drive, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, it's like water. It's always flowing. It's yeah. like, it's mm -hmm. always changing. You want more. And you said you went, going back to what you said, you went as far as you could, you mm -hmm. wanted to go in that. Right. And how do you know when something's done for you? I know when I, I think you just know it, it you just feel it. 
um, and you stop feeling um, inspired by it. it. It stops exciting you. You know what I mean? Like I knew <clears throat> it was time for me to move on when I started feeling a little bored and restless. And there's no reason to be bored or restless when you have that kind of opportunity. Wow. I mean, when you have the opportunity to have your own, you know, radio show and, you know, I, I on Long Island has such a huge audience and I That's have so true. many people who um, listen to me every day. And I was so grateful for that. And yet I felt like I was not, I just, I, I, I felt like it would be wrong to stay if I felt, um, board let somebody else who is where the fire is really burning right have that opportunity let me go do what i need to do right now i need to explore something else right. so maybe i'll go back to the radio i still am very passionate yeah, but that's about really, it i think that's really great <clears throat> that you, you said this is good i've done this right i need to do something else yeah um so now let me just take a money joe savino no not <clears throat> bullionaires bullionage you have to listen but he's always talking is that about what you were the, laughing a few minutes ago yes the and then it says oh that's great i can't do that he does, I, I, I do the bolognese. <laughs> wait, wait till you see what we have for food, Joe. You're gonna love it. Uh, Jessica, are you calling in, honey? What? Maybe, maybe she <laughs> fell asleep on her pain meds. Oh, I don't know. No. Oh my god. Okay, I mean, so it might be if she's had she like might dental not be stuff. Able to, she, yeah. Might so be. she says, "I'm too embarrassed." Oh, okay. Aww. All right, Jessica. Listen, Jessica Schaefer, we love you. She. I'm not gonna make her call in. Poor baby had dental. She had a, an emergency <clears> dental situation today. And she had to go and get a, a root canal thing, and she was supposed to be on the show. So she's on, um, she's all, poor baby. Don't worry, Jessica. We're good, but I'm going to reschedule you for a few weeks from tonight. Now, let's segue into our food, shall we? Yes. Since oh, yeah. Joe was so rude hmm. and not appreciating our bolliage, <laughs> talking about bolognese. Okay, so uh, what did we make tonight? Jessica, honey, I made this partly because you had that dental issue. Where I made <laughs> some serious <laughs> soft food. Right. I think I'm joking. I'm like a mother. <laughs> I think of these things. One of my kids had dental work. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is gnocchi marinara. So what is gnocchi, you say? I don't understand what that means, a lot of people. It is potato. It's an Italian word. Mm -hmm. It means potato pasta. And so gnocchi is very, very soft. It's made with potatoes. And when it comes in the package, you only boil it for three minutes. That's it. Do not boil gnocchi over because it'll just turn into like like um, mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. So this is delicious, and I made a fresh marinara sauce. Uh, look at all the hearts oh. coming through. Isn't I this know. delicious? That's <laughs> always for food. Yeah. And my plate, my mother bought me these this set of plates. All Italian girls need their mothers to buy them beautiful sets of plates. She bought me this, I think, when I was twelve, oh, and gave it to it's me. So nice that you still have that. Of though. course. <laughs> But I mean, I didn't get it when I was 12. She, years later, she said, I've had yes, this for you. Yes. So this is my um, gnocchi bouillonnaise. I love gnocchi. We're going to have this after the show. Also, look at what else I made because I really went with the Italian theme. Yes. I made an arugula salad. Uh, oh, my God. It smells good. I love arugula. It's very peppery and bitter, but I like that. So to counteract the bitterness, I threw... Pears. I took ba basta pears and sliced them super, super thin, like paper thin. Put some cucumbers, a little bit of celery, and Asiago. I shaved some Asiago cheese in there. So this is going to be fabulous. I am going to put some um, either pear infused vinegar or maybe some grapefruit vinegar. I have to use these oh. grape vinegars that I get yeah. from New England um, Olive Oil Company. So that is what we're having tonight. Oh, it's so good. It smells very good. Mm. And then, wait a minute, we have two desserts. We have two. We have chocolate, mm -hmm. olive, it's called olive oil cake. Chocolate olive oil cake, and then of course whipped cream because I love whipped cream. I always, I never run out of whipped cream. Don't get dirty, Joe. <laughs> it's not what you think. I just know, I feel I just, a comment is coming oh any God, moment Oh my he's going to say something about the damn nasty. whipped cream. <laughs> I just know it. Don't even think about it. Anyways, and then Walker was so sweet, and he brought my favorite cookies, Tate's. Yeah, a little hat nod to the Hamptons, actually. I was just going to say. And, you know, shout out to Kathleen King, who uh, runs Tate's. Uh, yes, well, she, it was her, her dad. Her grandfather was it her dad or her grandfather is Tate. Oh, really? But Kathleen King now runs. Uh, she's responsible for. for I cookies. this is my favorite chocolate chip cookie in a bag. Used to be called Kathleen's cookies, but oh, now really? it's Tate's. Yeah, but they is have it? a bake shop in Southampton. 
Oh my um, God. Which is amazing. They have like not just cookies, but brownies and bread. And, oh my God. I love the cookies. So they're so crunchy and they're super thin. So you can eat like 40 <laughs> and not feel guilty. Well, I don't feel guilty. Oh, about. I don't either. I just, with I, the baked goods, I right? cannot get you enough. Can't. Did you see Waitress, by the way? No. You must see Waitress. Yeah, I know. I've heard great things. On Broadway, it's yeah. about baking. There's a great song called What Baking Can Do. It's my mm -hmm. favorite song in the show. Now, I want to go back to Walker's, um, about Walker's show. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that. So Charles Caselli has joined us. Paul Sedlick has joined us. Um, who else is? Luis Cormier. Hi, Luis. Where have you been? Hmm. Uh, Luis comes in every week. Uh, okay, let me check. Joanne is still there. Joe is talking about Hampton Beach now. Uh, yes, it's beautiful out there. It's like the Cape, but super upscale. So um, anyway, okay, let's go back and talk mm -hmm. about, I want to talk about your show, okay. Walker, and let's promote that. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, sweetheart. Tell us what we need to know about your show. Okay, so um, my show is called From Ship to Shape. It's a play. It's really a monologue. It's That's really what it is. It's an autobiographical monologue. Uh, and, and how it, long is it? It's um, it's about seventy five minutes. Okay. Without an intermission. So why would you? Because uh, uh, I'm interested. Yeah. You said monologue, but when I think of monologue, I think of one minute, five minutes, right. ten minutes. So, but it's so it's a monologue in, in in the tradition of Spalding Gray. I'm not sure if you're familiar. Oh uh, yes, of Spalding course. Gray, but I was a huge fan of his. I am still a huge fan of his work, and he was a big inspiration so it's like to me. Stream, it's it appears to be stream of consciousness. Yes, it right? is in some moments. It is it is some partly that, mm. but it's also um so it's it's a, it's a monologue about a, a breakdown that I had, a, um a nervous breakdown that I had in my twenties. Wow. Um I didn't that, know that either about you. Yeah. Um you it, see it was, why I love doing this? Yeah, and it was <laughs> precipitated by a job that I took uh as a singer for a cruise ship. Well when I was twenty five. I, can, let me tell you, we have people that come on the show that have done cruise ships, and yeah. they really literally are sometimes... They can push anybody over the Yeah, <laughs> they talk about but it. They're the like, way, I can only do it for two weeks, yeah. and then I'm done. But the way that I say it <laughs> is that I was, had no business. I mean, I was not mentally stable enough to, to be on any kind of a boat at the time. Like, well, I feel like you if feel you trapped. don't... Hmm? Because of the feeling trapped? That, yeah, that did, certainly did not help. The fact that there's nowhere to run. I mean, mm. if you have, I just sort of get, that's the advice I give. If you have any kind of uh, underlying mental health issues, don't get don't on be. a ship <laughs> where you can't leave. Don't do it. And it's just, you know, it's, you have a contract. You've signed a contract. And, and how you have long to go was through your contract? Of, I think it was a six to eight month contract. Oh my I can't God, that's a long yeah. time. I mean, it, it, there are longer ones. But anyway, with the show, what the, what the monologue is about is, it's about mental, it's about de mental illness. It's about um, dealing with mental illness in today's world. Wow. And um, this particular story of how I went, that's why it's called From Ship to Shape. It oh begins on a cruise ship and it ends in the mental hospital. Oh my God, I can't wait to see yeah. it. Yeah, so it's, a, it's this journey that the audience takes with me through, um, you know, the highs and the lows and the chaos and the humor and the absurdity of the cruise ship uh, experience. And, 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 and I would uh, eventually, um, when I was hospitalized, be diagnosed as bipolar. So it's about coming to terms with that. It's really about coming to terms with uh, oneself and accepting oneself. I mean, wow. truly, because I think what partly what, what triggered this breakdown, uh, it was a long time coming anyway. I dealt with depression and anxiety all my life. But why this I think happened in my mid twenties when it did on this cruise ship was because it triggered um, my deepest fears about my own um, worth. Well, you know what is interesting that you you said you dealt with this from your twenties. Now, I think your generation is more open about talking about this kind of thing than my generation was, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and my parents' generation they didn't talk about it at all. Like. You know, I was just laughing like the universe is so funny. You started talking about mental illness and my friend, my friend, Unsteady Freddy literally joined us. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. Freddy's a funny guy. He's a rock and roll guy. And he goes by the name Unsteady Freddy. And sometimes he goes, you know, that's Unsteady. But <laughs> so we were just he's so such a funny guy. It was like perfect that you joined. Yes. Hi, Freddy. Um, but you, you younger kids, as I'm going to just say. Um, hi, Joshua Lewis. He's a chef. He's going to come on the show. We 
we didn't talk about, I mean, our mm -hmm. parents didn't talk about it at all. Mm -hmm. And then we would, we didn't call it depression. We mm -hmm. didn't call it. We just would say, oh man, he's crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah. you know, he hits the sauce a lot or, you know, that sure. guy's like off his rock. We didn't. And it was only in the nineties when I, I got here in the nineties and I, I was in my late twenties, early thirties Yeah. by that time. And it wasn't until I was probably in my forties that people started really openly mm -hmm. discussing this. And I know New York is very big about really being out there. Like there are ads in the subway mm -hmm. about where to seek help. We have even therapists you can text, you know, they have it's one of the greatest places you can be to be mentally ill or sober or, I mean, yeah, New York has are, got so many resources, so much you, support. Absolutely. Available. If you are uh, like, I know in addiction there, just AA alone in New York city, there are 1800 meetings. It's amazing. Right. So yeah. we didn't talk about that. Sure. When, when, uh, you know, so that's why I think it's so brave. What, what your generation has done is really brought it out. And now what this younger generation is mm -hmm. doing, mm -hmm. holy moly, this has been a week. Of, yeah. I just, I mean, I can't believe how amazing these kids are. I know. It's and inspiring. how they are just like these warriors. Yeah. And their voices are being heard. But you know, it's always been, it's always been the youth that really changed things in right. big numbers, mm -hmm. Vietnam, civil yeah. rights. And now this, I think this is a big thing. So mm -hmm. Walker, where can we see your show? So I, um, it debuted uh, in New York in the, this past fall off Broadway. And now I'm sort of working the festival circuit. Oh, wonderful. Um, taking it on tour when okay, I can. You know, specifically the Northeast. I'm I'm bringing it to it's, it's coming to New Haven in May. Um, hopefully, going to center stage in Baltimore in the fall of 2018. Wow. Okay. Um, but so that'll be that'll be a trip. Us, will of you course, keep us posted? Of course, I will. So, Just, it'll be a trip to go to Baltimore because that's where I went. To, I was hospitalized at Johns Hopkins. Oh my God. So so oh I'm God, hoping to actually chills. do it for the hospital, like yeah. do it for the staff and the patients well, because. Let me tell you something. That's very powerful. And if you were to do that, I mean, you got to let me know. Also, there's a. What's the story with Maria has a page, and I like to update people when like some of my guests, whatever, they'll send pictures or or something is happening, I will post that. I'll also post it on this and keep people um, just, you know, like, like just post it on what's happening with people that have been on the show. So please walk or let us know. Now, let's say you're in the Northeast because we're going to, you're going to start with the Northeast and you're somewhere because a lot of our friends are in the theater business. Sure. Please, if you want to book Walker's show, um, you can get in touch with Walker. Let's hold up that piece of paper again. What is the website for your show, Walker? Uh, you, t you tell it, I'll hold from, this up. From shiptoshape.com. And uh, yeah, you know, I've been really surprised that a lot of mental health facilities have actually gotten in touch with me because they've read about it, I read about the show and, and have booked the show for me to come as, you know, because it does have that component. It has that, you know, that educational, uh, outreach component to it. So it's Absolutely. not just entertainment for theater goers who love solo work, but it's also for, I think it can really help heal. I don't want to block the um, And it can really help save lives, I think. Um, I, I know it can, trust me. I, I we, um, that's very powerful stuff. So uh, please, if you want to get in touch with Walker, I know we have a lot of people out there that listen to the show that, um, that would probably not probably, they will love it and they'll be in touch with you. Thank so you. you know who you are. I don't want to call you out because if it doesn't, whatever, I don't want to, I don't like to embarrass people. Sure. But, and then people that are in this business that a, a lot of producers out there that people don't know who you are. So I don't want to call you out either. Otherwise everyone will be showing up at your house, won't they? Oh, I'll Knocking have them all. They can all <laughs> stay. I have a huge pullout. That's it. All right. So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm actually very moved by what you just said. You know, a couple of years ago, maybe, God, 10 years ago, I was doing, I was in this children's theater company. We would take the, the show to different places. We even went to Florida. We went to Jacksonville and a bunch of places down there. But we would do it mostly in the tri-state area. And mm -hmm. at one point, we went into a, a mental health facility that mm -hmm. was like a huge place. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to be like, it was like a famous building. And we actually did our show, even though it was a children's show, but we did it for the patients there. Yeah. And it was uh, really like 
amazing in so many levels. You know, I didn't know what to expect because I'm thinking this is a children's show. What are they, how are they going to respond? Right. React to it, but they actually loved it. It's so humbling to 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 speak to that audience because mm -hmm. they they know. And I and wow. I had um you know I did this benefit this mental health for I did a benefit for this mental health organization in the Hamptons. I did the show for it, and there every I would say that seventy five percent of the audience was made up of people struggling with mental illness. Unbelievable. And one by one, they came up afterwards and they said, hi, I'm Jenny. I suffer from schizophrenia. Hi, I'm Bob. I suffer from bipolar. It was the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful moving Well, to open yourself up life. like that, Walker, and be so vulnerable, to talk about something that happened to you, but to use it in a powerful way like that, is n it's not easy to do, but that is a per that is a, your purpose. That well, I was just yeah. gonna say that. I can't yeah. believe you just said that. Yeah, because I, because I, I just felt it. I didn't know that until um, I started working on this. That that this is now it's become a vocation. It's not yep. just a job or a career. It's it's a vocation. It's a calling that I, I had no idea I had. That part of my purpose is to um, is to tell this particular story and talk about this issue and lessen yep. the stigma. Absolutely. And I gotta say like part of what was so healing because I talk about kind of in a way that Spalding Gray did, it, every show is an examination of, you know, what did happen to me and how did I survive it? You know, it's like these, how do we survive these, these, these crises in our lives and right. these, these descents into hell? How do we get through them? Whether it's right. a loss or a mental illness or addiction or whatever it is, and I think that by writing it, first of all, I wrote it as a means of survival. Right. And they were journal entries at the time. How wonderful. And then crafting it into a piece of theater, I mean, there was nothing more healing But you than could have that. held on to those journals and just kept them for yourself. True. But to put yourself out there and not know what the response would be, that's, that's where the healing comes in for other people. I just want to acknowledge this. Already, yeah. while you were talking, Joanne Abundanza said, very interesting, especially today, to understand Thank you for sharing your story with us for us to learn. Mm. Thank you, Joanna. Thank for you, Joanna. Uh, and also, Joshua Lewis said, I suffer from depression and anxiety as well. Love the inspirational people. Openness is healing. Thank you for saying that. Thank you that. so much. And I have to say, from seeing the show, it, it makes Please. it uh, relatable, especially to people who are in the mindset of just seeing this as they're crazy. Right. Um, it's not that have, simple. Who who can't relate to it. Uh, you really do this in a way that can relate I can't to wait. many people. Yeah. Well, I know that there are so many theaters between here and um, Maine. I mean, just alone mm -hmm. going that way. There are so many theaters. Please, folks, get in touch with Walker. Let's hold that up one more time, Aww. Walker. Thank and you. spell it out for the radio. Walker. Yeah, so um, I keep hitting the mic. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. So it, the website is from ship to shape com. And you can find me, all my info is on the website. Um, you can contact me through the website from ship to shape.com. Or you can find me on Twitter, Walker on radio, or on Instagram, Walker Vreeland. Okay. Uh, yeah. This is such great, great stuff. Also, please feel free to share this, um, this Facebook Live, on, you know, on your pages or friends' pages, or send us a message. I send a lot, a lot of times I'll send this as a Facebook message to people to say, hey, you should watch this. Or if you want to like focus on that element or hairdressers, you want to, uh, you know, share about Evan, the colorist.com. And you want to tell your friends he's at, uh, Ion studio. Ion studio. I re who, who was the trichologist? I really oh, want to get in touch. You with have to get in touch with her. <laughs> First of all, she's amazing. Second yeah. of all, she's one of my great friends. Her name is Penny James yeah. and her salon is Penny James salon.com. I believe she's on, um, Madison and 60th. I believe. Oh, she's in, in New York. That's oh, amazing. yeah. We, she's we British to too. Yeah. She's amazing. And I cannot tell you, she's going to be coming back on the show. She was on the show, but she's helped me mm. a, a lot with that particular issue because it's not just men that start to lose their hair either. It's women yeah. too. And that it's just, you know, it's just one of these things that you don't feel like you have any options and that she specializes in that. Um, mm -hmm. So please, you want to go see Penny James, trichologist. And I know Penny's watching the show. Um, oh, here it is. There we go. Leo, you're Penny the greatest. PennyJamesSalon.com. PennyJamesSalon.com. So okay. if if the uh, if what you want to look into is the trichology, which is the uh, you know uh, working with hair loss and how to overcome that, 
Penny is your girl. You want to get your hair beautifully colored? What did you write? Evan owes me a song at the duplex. Who said that? <laughs> Leo. Leo's so funny. You would love you Leo. Think? I don't know about that. Come on, Evan. <laughs> oh, my God. Leo, what's the name of the restaurant you manage? Put it up there right now. Leo always brings me these unbelievable empanadas. He brought them last night from and always feeds me. So, Aww. And I went for lunch. It's the best lunch place and brunch place. Uh, at night, it's super, super, super busy. Uh, but if you want to get a table there at brunch or during the day, it's down in like by Church Street around there. Mm -hmm. I think it's, is it 61 Church? Leo, 81 Church, something like that. Uh, Anejo, it's called. A N. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, it's right by you. Jimmy, how much time we got? 20 seconds. Oh, my God, 20 oh, seconds. Right. Okay. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Evan Solers. Thank you. Uh, Walker Vreeland. Thank you. And please come back every Tuesday for What's the Story with Maria on armeddigitalmedia.com, Armed Radio Global. You can see this. I mean, you can hear this on podcast on Spreaker.com and iHeartRadio. Thank you, Jimmy Bell. Thank you, everybody. We love you. Thank Bye. you.